You're even left, you're even left. I'm going heaven, I'm going heaven. I'm going. Got you. That's what. Oh. Your productivity level has dropped 9%. You really need to stop popping up like that, you know? I'm afraid I can't help it. You programmed me to activate when you're demotivated. Not sure why I thought making a jump scare machine was a good idea, but I need a closer look. Transfer the image to my hollering. Transferring image. Mapping out your schedule. 11 hours? That can be right. Bring up my review inventory, please. Rendering hologram model. Please stand by. Hmm. RTX 3080, eh? Would you like to lock in your selection? Yeah, lock it in. Understood. RTX 3080 selected. Would you like me to get on the VFX work? Actually, no. I'll work on the VFX. You do the intro. Understood. Initiating intro sequence. So what's up guys, welcome back to yet another video and today we're talking about the RTX 3080 Aorus Master. There's a lot to talk about today, so after mentoring our sponsor, let's get on with the video. So, special thanks to Aorus for making this video possible. Uh, I really do have to thank them for giving me the opportunity to review this really rare graphics card. So yeah, with that being said, thank you guys so much for sponsoring the video, but you guys can be sure that this does not influence my review whatsoever. So yeah, whatever you're going to be hearing is my honest opinion. So the RTX 3080 Master, let's start off with the unboxing. So the unboxing in this case is pretty nice, there's not a whole lot in the box, so sorry to disappoint you in that specific sector. It is a really nice unboxing experience, the box is overall pretty premium, nothing too special, but it does have a really nice handle at the top just so that you can carry it around and show it off, just to add a touch of salt to the wounds of people who weren't able to snag one. Appreciate the insult to injury for those people, Auras. Yeah, pretty nice. When you're unboxing the graphics card and you pop open the magnetic mechanism, you're going to be greeted with a nice envelope from Auras, and it's going to contain two things. That is a quick start guide and a warranty extension paper. After that, you're going to be able to take off the first piece of foam to reveal the monolith of a graphics card that this 3080 is. And besides the graphics card itself, you are going to get a metal Aura sticker. So with all of that said, it's clear that the RTX 3080 RS Masters unboxing isn't anything too special. There's not a whole lot of stuff to unbox inside the box itself. I would have preferred a few more stickers, but the experience is nice, so yeah. But with that being said, let's move on from that topic onto the specifications itself. So of course there's your basic RTX 3080 specifications that you're gonna find in any RTX 3080 out there. You have your 8704 CUDA cores, you have your 68 second generation RT cores, you have your 10 gigabytes of GDDR6X memory running at a 19,000 megahertz memory clock, your 320 bit memory bus. So yeah, that's pretty much the basic specs. Uh, something that this card brings to the table is an 8% factory overclock that gets you from the 17 10 megahertz, that is the typical rate that you're gonna see, onto an 1845 megahertz clock. So that's a pretty nice jump right there. And if you know anything about the RTX 30 series of graphics cards, you'll know that these things take up a lot of power. And obviously given the huge heatsink design, this card has a pretty big TDP, so Aorus is recommending that you use an 850 watt power supply in combination with this graphics card. And while we're on the topic of power, Auras does have pretty nice high-end chokes along with a 20-phase power delivery system, so yeah, pretty nice stuff all over. And on that note, you have three 8-pin connectors to connect from your power supply to the graphics card itself. And these power connections do have some LED indicators that let you know if there is anything wrong with the power being delivered. So yeah, pretty nice stuff all around. From there on out, let's move on to the topic of rear I.O. selection. You have a pretty good array of rear I.O. ports. You have three DisplayPort 1.4As, along with two HDMI 2.1s and a singular HDMI 2.0 in the middle. Now going on from there, let's talk about the exact dimensions of this graphics card. It's 319mm by 125mm by 70mm. So obviously, if you look at the normal numbers, you get a really nice picture of just how big this card is. The normal Founders Edition is 295mm long, 112mm wide, and only 40mm tall. Pretty sizable difference between these two cards right here. So another feature of this card that I really like is the dual BIOS system. It allows you to choose between the flavors of Silent Mode and OC Mode. 
so you can take your pick whether you want a better acoustics or whether you want a tad bit more performance. And an added benefit of this dual BIOS system is for you overclockers out there, so if you decide to flash your BIOS for your overclocking needs, then you always have that extra BIOS to lean back on in case anything goes wrong. And now that we're done with all of that alphabet soup pretty much, uh, let's move on to the design elements of the graphics card itself. So the Horus Master has no issues with confidence about its size, and it really shows. This thing is absolutely massive, and the massive heatsink is actually what Horus is calling their max covered cooling. So this heatsink basically allows for a huge amount of surface area for all of the heat to be dissipated, because there's a ton of energy that's going into the card itself, and that has to be dissipated via the form of heat. So yeah, there's a ton of power going into the card itself, and all of it has to be dissipated somewhere. And the way that this heat is going to be taken away from the graphics card is the vapor chamber and the huge copper plate uh, that is residing on top of the GPU itself and on top of the VRAM. So all of that is making plentiful contact with that entire copper mechanism right there. And all of that heat is just transferred through these pipes throughout the entire heatsink, uh, at which point all of the air from these uh, three fans comes in and carries all of that heat along with it. So another good thing about this thermal design is these three double ball bearing fans. So two of them are 115 millimeters, while one of them is 100 millimeters, and basically they move in alternating directions. The outer two moving in an anti-clockwise direction, while the middle one moves in a clockwise direction. And this is going to be propelling air with less turbulence and less noise than, you know, just three fans moving in the same direction. And all of this air is traveling through the body of the graphics card and coming out through the other side of the heatsink. And some of it is actually coming out through the top of the graphics card as well, through a slot that's carved into the top of the backplate. The temperatures that I was seeing with this graphics card is around the 60 to 70 degrees Celsius mark. Happy to see that kind of temperature performance. A good amount of airflow going into the system and overall a really nice thermal design. So with that being covered, let's go over the aesthetic part of the design overview. So the graphics card has a decent amount of RGB elements scattered throughout the back plate, the side of the shroud and the front of the shroud. Uh, you're gonna get a good amount of RGB illumination and it's going to be lighting up your case a decent bit. My personal favorite part is the LCD display on the side that allows you to display anything from custom GIFs to you know already built-in GIFs, text, uh, whatever you basically want to show on that specific display. On a side note, if you are using the Aorus Engine software, make sure that you don't install it on the C drive and on some other drive because the C drive will not allow you to write. Uh, it's only going to give you read permissions, so that's going to mess with the Aorus software and you're not going to be able to use custom GIFs. So yeah, definitely do install it on another drive, but yeah. Alongside that, there's also the physical design of the graphics card that I really like, especially the backplate. The backplate doesn't only add structural integrity to support the heft of the entire heatsink, it also is really pretty. Half of it is covered in a brushed metal finish, while the other is your typical metal finish that you'll see on these kinds of metal backplates. And um, yeah, that's the backplate. It also has a nice Aorus logo and a tiny piece of writing that says Aorus that glows up. So going on from there, since I've already mentioned the RGB systems installed, you are going to be controlling this via the Aorus engine software, which in my opinion has a bit of a clunky UI, but it is overall just fine and um, you know, you're going to be able to change a lot of settings. There's a good amount of customization available. There's a lot of presets. Uh, you can choose your own custom colors, obviously, as you can with any other software. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much it for the software. On to my overall thoughts. Uh, in my opinion, after scanning all of the uh, benchmarks on YouTube, on Ryzen and Intel platforms, and comparing them to my own benchmarks and my own experience, I found that this graphics card is pretty much ranking uh, above most of the Zotac, MSI, and uh, EVGA cards that you're going to be seeing. So definitely, uh, if you're looking into those cards as well, and this one is in stock, I would take this one over those. And um, outside of that, um, for someone like me that is into creative work like visual effects and video editing, as well as uh, dabbling a little bit in 3D, this graphics card allows a lot of this uh, you know, workflow to be really optimized with good performance and the ability to easily scrub through the timeline and stuff. And as well as the fact that um, whether I'm looking to play RDR2 or Battlefield 5 on my 4K display with crank settings, or whether I'm just trying to chill and stream Valorant at 1080p 240Hz, I can do both of those gaming scenarios as well as all of those uh, workload scenarios thanks to the 3080. So if you're not um, deterred by the massive size and the weight, and you're into the design uh, aesthetically, then I would definitely say that if you find this card in stock, you should just go for it. It's a great card with great performance and uh, great cooling as well. So yeah, it does have my seal of approval. But if you guys found this video to be helpful at all, definitely a sub and like is appreciated. 
And um, yeah, with that being said, hopefully you guys liked the video. Thank you guys so, so much for watching, and I'll see all you beautiful people in the next one. Goodbye!